Hi everyone, it's Talia from Zart Art and today we're going to be making a steampunk inspired panel with a rust base. Steampunk is a retro futuristic style which was inspired by 19th century machinery. So what we're going to do today is take some of that inspiration from that style and create our own panel. So to begin, here is a little example of what we'll be creating. So we've used a variety of different materials to create a collage as our base and then used a rust base over that collage to create this really cool rusted effect. So the process is first to begin by creating our collage and you can use a lot of different materials to create your collage. So some of the things that I have around this table include beads, we've got some buttons here as well, corrugated cardboard is really handy to use. We've got some pop sticks over here, some polystyrene shapes which can be cut down and of course we've got our cogs and gears, wooden cogs and gears which we'll incorporate as the finishing touches to our work. So when we're working in our collage you want to think of this in terms of layers. We've also got some balsa wood here which will help us to build up the texture of that surface and to make it appear that our work is in layers. So what I'm going to do is work with some of my larger pieces like this balsa wood and my corrugated card. I'm going to cut these down into smaller pieces and layer them onto my cardboard base. So this cardboard base is 200 GSM card and we just need a base that's going to be firm enough to hold up the weight of our collage. So as you can see here, We've got quite a bit happening on our base, but it's still holding up nicely. It's not folding over. So that's all you need as a base to work on. So you could use cardboard boxes or even canvas board as well if you wanted to. But to begin this, I'm going to cut down my balsa wood and my corrugated card and layer that onto my surface. And I'll be using super tack to help me stick that down. So I've finished the first layer of my collage. So as you can see, there's not a whole lot of detail here, but I'm really trying to build up that base with some of those larger shapes. And then we can work over the top with our smaller shapes. I'm going to use some of these wooden wheels. I think a few buttons as well, because they're quite large. And I'll use some of my cogs and gears to lay those over the top. So while you're having a look at your composition, just lay things out before you begin sticking anything down because I always like to see how things will look before I stick everything down at once. And it's a good way of working in segments as well. So you can place everything where you like it, have a look and change it around and then you can begin pasting it down once you're happy with how everything is looking overall. So I'm going to use some of those wooden wheels, cogs and gears and my buttons, place them around and once I'm happy with where they're sitting, I can paste those down too. So now I've placed some of those shapes down onto my panel and we're going to add a few finishing touches using some very small beads as well as our poly shapes which I'm going to cut down. Of course you can use some different varieties of poly shapes and other materials especially if they have more of a 3D form then you could transform this into more of a three dimensional kind of panel but it depends what you have to work with in terms of how your composition pans out but otherwise the finishing touches that I'll use are with those little beads as well as my poly shapes. If you had wires you could incorporate that as well but there's lots of different possibilities with this project which is 
is what makes it really fun. And while you're coming up with your composition, you can have a look at some circuit boards as well as machinery from the 19th century and kind of compare and contrast the difference between technology of today as well as technology back then. And you can combine the two to make a really interesting aesthetic and have a look into that steampunk style and incorporating some new age technology into that as well. But it's a really good start to have a reference point by looking at that steampunk style and then having a look at actual machinery that was used during the 19th century compared to today. So now I've finished my collaging. So as you can see, there's quite a few layers going on here, which gives it a really nice, busy feel, especially if you're looking at those circuit boards or the old school machinery. There's always a lot going on in terms of making the mechanics work. So we've finished our collage. The next step will be to allow it to dry, but I've got my already dried piece here. And then the next step from there is to use our rust base. So we've got two different bases that you can use. We've got the rust base, which has iron in it, which will create that orangey brown look. And we've got our verdigris base, which we will be using that creates a bit of a greeny blue finish. And this one is copper based instead of iron based. So the copper will create the greeny blue, the iron will create that orangey brown finish. So to use our base, we don't need to do an undercoat because most of the materials that we used are quite absorbent. If you're using a lot of plastics or metals and you're finding that your base doesn't cover over it very well, it is a primer you can use, but we will be fine just to use our verdigris base as is without using a primer. So to use your base, you do want to make sure that you have mixed it thoroughly because it does have the copper powder in it. You wanna make sure that is evenly distributed throughout that paint and if you are working with younger kids you might want to get them to wear gloves because this does have the copper powder in it you do not want it in your eyes or in your mouth and it won't taste very nice either so if you are working with younger students maybe wear some gloves while you're applying this but otherwise you just apply it like you would a paint and we're going to apply two coats so two coats is necessary especially because of how absorbent some of the materials we're using are we want to make sure that we do have enough of that copper powder in each layer that will create that rust finish once we add our patina later on once this is dry so just like a normal paint making sure you apply it nice and thick and we will apply two layers once the first layer has dried. So using your brush, there are a lot of little intricate details in some of these areas. So you do want to make sure that you get your brush nicely into those crevices so that you are coating the whole area of your panel. Now we've got our verdigris base on our base panel. 
So we will leave that to dry. You will most likely need two layers. As you can see, some of the beads haven't taken on that base really well because they are plastic beads, so they will need two coats, but that should cover it fine. But we do have a dried base, so this is two layers. So for waiting for your first layer to dry, that will usually take about 10 to 20 minutes before you can apply another layer or you can dry it yourself a little bit quicker using a hairdryer. But this one is already prepared with two layers and they are spread on quite thickly. So when we use our oxidizing patina over the top, you should see the rust base start to activate. So this one is the verdigris base. So we'll have that blue green finish to it. So using the oxidizing patina, you do want to flood the surface for the best result. So you might want to have something underneath your table if you do need to protect your table. And we pour a good amount of that patina into our bowl. Using a clean brush, we're going to brush and flood the surface of our panel with this patina. And then you should see the reaction where our surface will start to rust up and have that greeny blue color. So apply it quite generously. You'll notice that some areas it will stay or flood, such as this corrugated card in those gaps. That's where most of the patina is gonna sit, which is completely fine. Just make sure all areas are covered nicely. So you might need to repeatedly go over specific sections a few times. Okay, so now we've coated most of the area with our patina. So we need to let that air dry for at least half an hour. If you do have some areas that are starting to rust up and other areas aren't starting to have that chemical change, then you can add more of your patina onto those areas if you need to. But otherwise we're going to sit and let this air dry for a little while and we'll add a little bit more patina if we see areas where we think we need to. But you should be able to see some areas are already starting to turn a little bit green and that change will occur more and more over that half hour period. So we're back and we've got our base that has had the patina covered over the top and you can see that that started to turn into that greeny blue color where the patina was sitting. So some areas haven't reacted as much as others. So with that, you can add more of that patina in certain spaces if you want it to have more of a reaction. But I kind of like the flaked speckled look that it's got in some areas where it's not all covered in that one base. So you can flick the patina on the top of your base using your brush or you can try some other different ways of applying the patina to get that verdigris effect. So have a bit of a play with some different ways of applying the paint if you want to try out some different techniques but otherwise this way of applying the paint is me just brushing it over the top and some areas have resisted more than others just because of the different materials that I've used such as those plastic beads or that polystyrene so you can get some really interesting textures and effects through that but otherwise that's the entirety of the lesson there are some good connections that you can make here with science and that chemical reaction of the base and the patina you can also link it to technology so old technology from the 19th century compared to technology today and have some really good discussions around that and this was just a really simple panel that we've created so you could do a really simple collage like this with your junior students or you can create something more complicated with your senior students or something that's 3d as well and using a range of different materials materials or found objects can work as well. I hope you enjoy this activity and I look forward to seeing you next time.